extra practice with margin of error and confidence intervals. So in this first problem, number one, an inspector monitors large truckloads of potatoes to determine the proportion that have major defects. She intends to compute a 95% confidence interval and selects a sample, a random sample of course, of 50 potatoes from the truckload of more than 2,000. Suppose that only two of those 50 potatoes are found to have major defects. Which one of the assumptions for interest, inference about a proportion using a confidence interval is violated? In this case, large sample would not apply. Large sample condition where n has to be at least 30 only applies for means, x bar. And so in this case, that is not the correct answer. So let's go ahead. 10% um, condition is usually pretty easy to verify. We've got 50 potatoes from a truckload of more than 2,000. 50 is less than 10% of 2,000. It would be 10% of 500, right? So we're good. This is met, which means that it is not violated, okay? So lastly, we need to check large counts. Is it true that n times p hat and n times 1 minus p hat are both at least 10? And in this case, 50 gets multiplied by 2 out of 50, which is only 2, which does not meet our requirement of being at least 10. So large counts is the condition that is violated. In number two, a noted psychic is tested for extrasensory perception, is presented with these cards with four different symbols. If they were guessing, they'd get it correct 25% of the time. So which of the following is the smallest number of trials you'd have to conduct to estimate P within 1% of 95% confidence? So we would want to do a margin of error. So the margin of error is everything that comes after the plus or minus in our confidence interval, okay? So the Z star times the standard error, that whole value needs to be less than or equal to this 1%, okay? So 0 0.01. My Z critical value for 95% confidence would be 1.96. And then I'll plug in 0.25 because that's what it tells us to use. So the complement would be 0.75 and I'm solving algebraically for n, okay? So I'm gonna start by dividing both sides by 1.96 and then I'm gonna square both sides as well, okay? So when I do this in my calculator, I am going to make sure that each time I'm doing a step, I'm keeping the same value in my calculator. So 0 0.01 divided by 1.96, enter. I'm going to square it, hit enter. Okay, now I'm going to rewrite it as 0.25 times 0.75 over n is going to be less than or equal to that 2.603. It's a scientific notation value times 10 to the negative fifth. It's a really small decimal, okay? But what I need to do here is I need to get n out of the denominator, so I'm gonna cross multiply it to get it out of the denominator. So in the calculator, I'm gonna do 0 0.25 times 0 0.75 and divide it by that answer that I already had in there. Okay, so watch me. We've got 0 0.25 times 0.75, and I'm going to divide it by, and I can just go up and highlight it and hit enter to get that answer down there. Oh, what happened here? 0 0.25 times 0.75 divided by, oh, because it's giving me scientific notation. That's why it's e to the third. Oh, I don't like this calculator. Sorry, everyone. Um, so to get that mode off, I need to do, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know why it's giving it to me in that weird way. Well, it's just 7,203 times. So, um, this calculator is giving me a weird answer. It should be 7,203. And hopefully that's what your calculator says, because that's the right answer. It's answer C here. Okay. 
All right, so that's kind of fun to find out that that calculator does that, but oh well. So you want to design a study to determine the proportion of adults who agree with the statement, do you think this coin will land on tails when I flip it? You're going to use 95% confidence again, and you're going to get a margin of error of 5% or less. So again, I start with my Z star, square root of P hat times 1 minus P hat over N being less than or equal to my margin of error desired. So my margin of error desired is 0 0.05. Z critical value for 95% is 1.96. And we were not really given any idea of what p hat should be in this case last time it said to use 0.25 this time it didn't so the conservative value if i'm not told anything is to use p hat of 0.5 if not told anything differently and then of course divide it by n so i'm going to go ahead and divide by 1.96 and then I'm also going to square both sides. So I'm gonna do that all at once in the calculator just because I don't have a ton of room here as I do it on this sheet. So I'm gonna do 0.05 divided by 1.96 and I'm gonna square it and I get 0 0.00065. So 0.5 times 0.5 over N should be less than or equal to 0 0.00065, da, 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 Okay, again, I'm keeping that exact value in my calculator anyway, so in my work, it doesn't really matter how I round. So then I'm going to cross multiply to get the n out of the denominator. And so I'm going to do 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, and I'm going to divide it by that previous answer, and I get 384.15 as I do that. And so the minimum sample size required would be to round up to 385 in this case. Awesome. All right, last one. Here's a tough one. So a one proportion Z interval was constructed and a researcher wants to reduce the margin of error to one fifth of the original margin of error. So a smaller margin of error. Okay. So right off the bat, what should she do to the sample size? If she wants a smaller margin of error, she wants a bigger sample size. Okay. Smaller margin of error means bigger sample size. So B is not it and C is not it. Off the bat, get rid of those. You're not going to have a smaller sample get you a smaller margin of error. So is it going to be possibly multiplying the sample size by 5 or 25? So we got to think about what is the margin of error again. So the original margin of error would be constructed by Z star times the square root of P hat times 1 minus P hat over N. So if I took that n and I want to make the whole margin of error one-fifth of the original, the two options that I'm given that could possibly work here would be to multiply my sample size by 5 or to multiply my sample size by 25 in the denominator. So because of the nature of the square root here, technically you would be multiplying by the square root of one-fifth if I were to multiply just the denominator by 5. But in multiplying the denominator by 25, it's the square root of 1 25th, which is one-fifth. Okay? So by multiplying that 25 in the denominator, I'm technically taking one-fifth of that original margin of error, okay? So in this case, it would be we want to multiply that sample size by 25. All right, so thanks for watching, and if you do have any questions, please follow up. I hope you all have a great day.